Good evening, everyone. This is Seven Seas Cruising Association, and this is Offshore Passage Opportunities. We're talking sailing the USA to the Caribbean during COVID. Uh, we have two wonderful speakers, Hank Schmidt and David Lyman. You'll be given an opportunity to do a question and answer. If you would like to have that sent to you afterwards, you will do question and answer. If you want to chat, we will answer chats at the end of the presentation. Offshore Passage Making Opportunities is actually the number one networking service in the United States. OPO has helped thousands of sailors meet and make successful passages since 1993. Experienced crew seeking quality passage opportunities, sailors seeking additional offshore experience, skippers seeking experienced offshore crew. Hank Schmidt, well, for the past 25 years, Hank has spent on average 100 days a year at sea with tens of thousands of offshore miles. And I know because we've seen him on a lot of them. In 1993, he started an offshore crew service called Offshore Passage Opportunities. Today, there's over 3,000 members in his group. It's the largest crew service. Each fall since 2000, Hank has sponsored the annual NARC Rally, which is North American Rally to the Caribbean between Newport and St. Martin's with a stop in Bermuda. From and to the USA from almost every port, Northeast USA, or even Cape Town, South, South Africa to Grenada, Hank is the ultimate offshore passage maker, as well as helping the developing marine industries in the Eastern Caribbean. Dave Lyman is a marine photojournalist with stories published in Caribbean Compass and Cruising World, Points East, Ocean Navigator and others. He's owned and sailed four separate boats or different boats from 34 to 57 feet and made the Maine to Caribbean offshore crossing in two dozen times in both ways. I'd like to turn this over to David. I'm and here. we have David Lyman and Hank Schmidt. And David, take it away here. I would like to, but I don't see anything. I can hear you. Uh, Joan, I'll take it. Uh, Joan, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, and it's so great to be talking to Seven Seas Cruising Association fellow members and so many sailors that are thinking and planning to go south this year and next year. Uh, the overview for today, uh, because it's the title of our presentation is Sailing from the U.S. to the Caribbean during COVID and Departure op Options for the Amateur Cruiser. So we have, uh, we've done some pre-taping as well. So we're gonna have some video from Mark Soares in Bermuda explaining their per, uh, COVID procedures. Then we have three people down in St. Martin, the Minister of Tur Tourism, uh, the president of the Marine Trades Association, and also the head of IGY Marina at Ile de Sol, who'll talk about COVID down there. Then we'll talk about the different departure options from the East Coast uh, and crew sizes and how this year is different. There we go, there year. we go. And then, of course, uh, we'll have information about other uh, part, uh, ports of arrival in uh, the Caribbean besides uh, Bermuda and St. Martin. Uh, that'll be uh, mainly David, uh, maybe a little help from Joan. Then uh, we're also going to uh, have room for our chats at the end. Uh, and we do have a nice screenshot at the end with links and uh, contacts for information. So don't worry about taking notes while you hear this. So, uh, David, if you're ready to queue up that first video from uh, Bermuda and Mark Soares, we're ready when you are. Good, thank you, Hank. Um, what we've done is we pre-recorded uh, the interviews we've done with the people on Bermuda and down in St. Martin so that uh, we can make it more succinct. So let's see if I can get this all up and running. Um, where is my Bermuda link? Oh, it's over here, just a second. Share, and I gotta go to here. It's great to have you with us uh, again this year, besides uh, the normal getting people getting boats ready, uh, having to worry about the weather, we have COVID on top of everything. And, and I know you're going to explain to everybody, but I just want to start off by commending you in Bermuda for having such good protocols in place, uh, how you're going to proceed this year with boats coming into Bermuda uh, and passing through on the, the sail south this year. You know, Bermuda's been working on protocols right since the beginning of this whole thing to try and 
clear uh, how yachts uh, can proceed to Bermuda. There was a certain point where the port was closed. The port is now open, uh, but there are protocols in place. Um, the main thing is, is that uh, if you're planning to come to Bermuda and spend some time and you want to get off the boat, you have to get a pre-test uh, prior to, to leaving. And that, that the requirement has changed a few times. The requirement now is that it's got to be that you have to have a test that's been taken within seven days of departure from your last port. Okay, the day of the test is day zero. It used to be that it was seven days prior to arrival, but obviously being coming on a yacht, that's not so easy. So the, the test must be performed by accredited lab. It has to be a PCR test, and you have to have a copy of that, uh, that negative result. Once you've taken the test and you've got a negative result, you have to apply for what's called a travel authorization seven days prior to your departure to Bermuda. It really should be done by the individuals on board the vessel, theoretically, and you do have to upload a negative result. There is a cost involved, it's $75, but that does include the price of all testing in Bermuda. So it's, it's really uh, not too bad. Uh, it does accept credit cards and it all must be done online. And as you said, I'm sure we can uh, provide a link and also additional information uh, of how to uh, proceed with that. Once you've got your uh, travel authorization uh, and you're heading towards Bermuda, uh, it does, uh, you, can up, you can actually uh, send uh, copies of the results to Bermuda Radio. On the arrival, you follow the regular procedures and essentially you're in quarantine until you receive the results of your first test. You will be tested on arrival in Bermuda. If you arrive at 4 a.m. in the morning, you probably won't be tested until the next morning. The test results are generally take about 24 hours to be returned, depending on time of arrival. Once you receive a negative test result in Bermuda, your first test result, this is making sure that you've already have your pre-test and your travel authorization, after your negative first test result, and in that 24 hours, you should get your result, then you are free to roam about Bermuda. Social distancing, you have to monitor your temperature and various other protocols, but you are then no longer in quarantine on the vessel. Until you receive your first negative test result in Bermuda, you're quarantined to your vessel. Now, supposing you don't have a pre test but for prior to coming to Bermuda and you haven't completed the travel authorization process, it's a mandatory 14-day quarantine. So it's very important that you do the pre-test. Regarding that 14-day quarantine, you are given credit for time at sea. So if you're at sea for six days, you get, you'll get you be six days less of that quarantine on arrival in Bermuda. But if you do want to spend some time really on land in Bermuda and enjoying our beautiful island, it's best to, travel, to follow the travel authorization process, get a free test, which has to be done seven days prior to departure from your port, then test on arrival. Then you'll be cleared to enjoy Bermuda. You will then be tested again on day four, day seven, and day 14. Now, you don't have to stay that entire time. You're free to leave at any point in that process. They ask you to anchor what's called powder hole, which would be basically due south of Ordnance Island, which would be to the uh, west of what's called Hen Island. Those that have sailed to Bermuda before, Bermuda Radio uh, is always in communication with all vessels. Make sure your radio is on channel 16. They'll probably move you to channel 27 uh, for communication, and they'll advise you on when to proceed to the customs dock which is on the corner of uh, Ordnance Island, on the northeast corner of Ordnance Island. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So we're on the southern side of Ordnance Island, the old cruise terminal building, mm -hmm. uh, Bermuda Yacht Services. We manage the docks for the town. So once vessels are clear and allowed to leave the vessel, they're more than welcome to anchor on the town docks or more on the town docks. We're directly adjacent to our office and come in and use our facilities where we can at least give you some uh, some internet, some free Wi-Fi, uh, so communicate with families, etc. The only thing I didn't mention, which is a, another option completely, which we have had best reviews, is the fact that 
if you arrive and you absolutely have no intention of getting off the vessel and you're happy just to ride out some weather and you're going to leave, you don't have to get tested at all unless you're not planning to leave the vessel. So you don't have to get tested on day one or four or eight or anything long as you stay in quarantine in Bermuda uh, and they desperately need some supplies. We can also arrange for contactless delivery or even if they're not permitted to leave the vessel and go ashore, we can get permission for them to come in potentially by tender and, and pick up some uh, some provisions or something if they're desperate. Uh, we won't be able to arrange you know, for mechanics and things like that until the vessel is completely clear uh, of quarantine. But in the quarantine, during the quarantine process, we can at least facilitate with provisions if required. Hmm. Well, as you okay, David, that was very good. Uh, so that was okay, the Hank. Yeah, Should that we go to the next I one. Uh, well, yeah, let, we'll introduce again, uh, folks. It does sound very confusing. Again, we do have the link. Why am I not? That you'll be able to see to read everything on. Why am I not on? We are also taping this presentation. Something screwy here. Able to see it again. So don't worry about taking notes right now. You'll be able to view it again. And we do have the screenshot at the end. Uh, our next video is about St. Really Martin. Good. And after we've seen that video in St. Martin, we will talk about a uh, normal year heading down and our recommendations for this year and what we're doing a little bit above and beyond what the protocols are, just because uh, we also are doing the protocols, of course, to keep the people in St. Martin down in the Caribbean safe, but also our own crew while we're out at sea. So David, if you're ready for that second video from St. Martin, we'll go ahead and queue, up, queue that up. And this is the Minister of Tourism from St. Martin, uh, a representative from the Marine Trades Association, and then also uh, Brian Lair from IGY Marina. So we're ready when you are, David. I gotta go find my file here. Just stand by, it'll come up in a minute. Um, no. Sure, we, it, it took some coordination this week. Uh, we interviewed Mark Soares just last Friday and the uh, people in St. Martin yesterday. Um, again, uh, trying to make it easy for everybody to get the protocols for this year uh, for sending down. Um, the big difference, of course, this year is uh, filling out forms ahead of time and getting that test uh, for as you'll read in uh, St. Martin, five days before departure uh, for Bermuda, Bermuda, it's seven days before departure. You wanna go online and uh, fill out the information. Uh, it looks like we're ready for our St. Martin video. Thanks, David. Good afternoon. We're very excited about the season coming up. As you know, um, the yachting and marine industry for St. Martin um, is close family. We are friends to the yachting and the marine industry. We've been for the last months working very close with the marine trades and government, of course, together um, setting protocols that welcomes and, and makes this as effective and efficient as possible for this industry. Um, we have improved on a lot of different um, guidelines, I believe, and uh, we just want to have that as director of tourism, we want to welcome everybody back and uh, letting you know that this will be a safe haven um, with uh, responsible protocols, but at the same time accommodating um, the industry. So we're very excited for the season and uh, we're ready for it, uh, public and private sector. It's passed you know, how easy it has been for people to come to the welcoming and friendly island of St. Martin. Uh, this year, of course, there's been a lot of confusion because of COVID, and we just want to let any sailors that are planning to come down from the United States, what the procedure will be uh, for arrival in St. Martin, what they need to do beforehand, maybe online, and then when they arrive. So, Norena, if you'd like to start off, that'd be great. Sure, I'm happy to start. So first of all, my name is Marina Edelman. I am a private business owner on St. Martin. Um, I actually associate uh, association and also on the board. So with the St. Martin Marine Trades Association um, of St. Martin, we have worked quite diligently since, since the outbreak of COVID last winter, so in March. We have worked very closely with government in an attempt to establish protocols that are consistent and easy to understand is the following. 
Um, all flight arrivals um, are subject to pre-arrival COVID testing. So that is, St. Martin is basically open to everyone from all over the world to our commercial airport, um, but an RT-PCR test must be taken within 120 hours of the last leg of your journey is the way that the rule is. Uh, Good afternoon. Oops, so Daisy, here we go. About... Excuse me. Where all of the specific regulations as they apply to coming on the island are clearly spelled out. And every arriving traveler must also submit an electronic authorization. Um, so it's just a little form that says who you are, where you're coming from, some basic biographical information about you. If you arrive with that negative test, you submit it as air travelers will do. Um, and there you come in, you do your clearance, and there is no quarantine. You're immediately free to circulate with the population. The option two for those who are not able to get pre-departure COVID tests would be to arrive into St. Martin, to have a test within 24 hours of arrival that will be organized, and Brian um, will be talking more about that in a moment, but we have testing capacity on island. Um, and you would need to remain in quarantine on board until you have the results of that COVID test, which my experience thus far, we are getting results within 24 hours. So you're looking at about a 48 hour quarantine, arriving, getting a test, getting the results. I'm assuming the results are negative, you're free to circulate. Um, we are really looking forward to welcoming all vessels back um, this season. Um, I think a lot of people are gonna be seeking warmth because um, in this crazy time, frankly, to be in a sunny um, place where we can spend the majority of our time outside is very attractive. Um, and we're doing everything we can to open and keep ourselves, our own population, as well as our visitors safe. So what I want to make a point of is that what IGY is doing is a private donation to the St. Martin Laboratory Services, and then everything is going to be run by them under the protocols and procedures put in place by government substances, okay? So that's the first statement. And secondly, what we're really trying to do from my GUI's point of make sure adequate tests available for the maritime industry specifically. But our goal is to try to be able to get a rapid response for you. So we're shooting for three, four hours type response, but definitely within 24 hours, where in some cases, if there's a backlog in, in the normal government ones, you may find that to be a little bit longer. Is there a fee for this test? Sure. Yes, there will be a fee, and it will, and that is yet to be determined. Um, it will be consistent with what's being done in other islands and all that. Right now, the base testing center will be set up at the Yacht Club Il de Sol, and then we've recently had discussions with the Marine Trades Association to look into setting up a secondary one. The understanding that most people that are planning to come to St. Martin will test within the five days, so we will not have to uh, uh, worry about uh, getting retested. But uh, I'm more wanting to, in our webinar, let people know, uh, such as like the Salty Dog, they're planning to go straight to Antigua. I would like to let them know that why pass by St. Martin if you need to supply, get repairs done. But they might not have uh, made plans to visit St. Martin. I'm assuming they're all going to still test before they leave. But if they just show up with a test and they haven't filled out any of the government forms beforehand they're arriving, uh, you know, basically what I'm wanting to do is can people come in if they've been tested but haven't filled out any paperwork? Can they? To answer your question, um, essentially, I think if you arrive in St. Martin with the negative test um, that is done within the time frame, um, then the ideal would be to submit your online form at the website stmartinentry.com. You will get back within about, uh, well, I don't know exactly, but I think within minutes or hours, uh, basically an authorization to enter St. Martin. And I think that once you have that authorization with your negative result, then the skipper, I don't think there's any reason for multiple people to go, but the skipper could go with passports for, 
for the crew um, to clear in in Simpson Bay as you've done traditionally. And also, I think we have some advantages. Um, like for example, so far, so far they're not requiring retesting. So as soon as you test and you're clear and you can come onto the island, you can stay as long as you want. You don't have to be retested. And again, we have some examples of those low risk countries that are on there. Um, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent. Um, there's, there's several Caribbean islands that are on the low risk um, category. And you can basically, in theory, depart from St. Martin, go to those islands. They might, those islands might require a test. So you may have to do a test in St. Martin when you leave to go there, but St. Martin will not require you to retest when you come back here, once you've only been to a low risk country. Now, frankly, okay. all of the Caribbean islands should get together, in my view, and agree on a low risk measure and have a bubble. That would benefit the entire Caribbean, but so far, that hasn't happened. So we will keep you posted. What I can say is that St. Martin has its standards that it is applying. So if you want to go to a CARICOM country, we can get you tested and we can get you there. And then if that country is low risk, you can come back without having to retest. That's good. That's, um, good. That, 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 that's, that's a good bullet point. Okay, thank you very much. That was very good. So again, it all sounds very, very complicated. And what I'm going to do is just explain what I am doing with my crews this year to sort of help just use an example. And we're going a little bit beyond what the protocols are. But uh, I always leave. I've left every year since 1998 from Newport. We leave with a small fleet of swans. Uh, we only have three this year. And I am not doing the official NARC rally. I'm glad we got our 20th year in yesterday. But with so much uncertainty, uh, I didn't want to uh, invite and be responsible for a lot more boats. Certainly any boats that want to leave in our same weather window will be allowed. But we have three swans. We have 17 crewing, crew flying in from different parts of the country. And we are going to ask them also to test before they even travel to the boat. As many of us know, in the United States, certain states even require quarantine when you first come to that state. So if any of you have crew coming from somewhere else, you might want to ask them to test before they get on the plane to come visit. Then we're all going to gather in Newport and we're there for three or four days and we're going to test again. So that's the test that we will have before we leave for Bermuda. And if you remember uh, in, the, in the protocols for Bermuda, uh, you can't even go online until seven days before. Then you go on, register, pay your $75 and upload your negative test uh, any time those seven days beforehand. So we always have always stopped in Bermuda on the way south. I sort of have a saying that God put Bermuda there for sailors heading south and it's sin not to stop. And our thinking on that is two things. First, it's very hard to get a seven, eight, nine day weather window. By breaking up the trip from the United States down to the Caribbean, you're doing it in four or five day first leg, maybe five, six days second leg, much easier to get weather windows. Uh, plus it's also a, a good place to reprovision, stop, et cetera. Um, then also, uh, we're going to be in Bermuda for three or four days. We've actually moved up our times this year a little bit for departure so we could be in Bermuda for elections. So we're going to be there for election party. And then three or four days there, so we do not have to test again because by day four in Bermuda, if you go there, you're going to have to test again. But we'll leave or plan to leave within four days, which means with another six to seven days down to St. Martin, we will have more than 14 days and be tested three times before we get to the Caribbean. So we're doing this not only to make sure that when we depart, everybody will be uh, safe. And again, we go with five, six, seven people on board. So you wouldn't want to leave and have one person get sick on the way. So that prevents uh, that situation. If you're going with much smaller crews, maybe you don't have to do that first test uh, the week before arrival. But uh, certainly that test before you depart, whether you go by air or by uh, plane, uh, or boat, you're certainly going to have to do that test. Now, in, uh, for the Alaska America's Cup in Bermuda, I actually organized a rally to the Cup, and we had 30 boats leave from six different ports. And we're all used to looking at flat charts, but if you looked at a globe, you find out that anywhere you leave from, from the United States to Bermuda, is roughly about the same distance, 650 to 700 miles. Whether you leave from Newfoundland, I mean, uh, from Nova Scotia, uh, John Kretschmer, who spoke with us last year at the Seven Seas Cruising Association game in Annapolis, in his book, Sailing to the Edge of Time, he talks about how he leaves in late October every year from uh, Lunenburg, and it's about 600 miles, 700 miles Bermuda. But whether you leave from Maine 
Newport, New York, Chesapeake, even uh, a little bit further south, it's about the same distance. And even for the America's Cup, we had boats come from Florida. They had a little boost from the stream. So everybody got there within uh, four or five, six days. And then we had the nice break there uh, to get ready for the second leg. Now, as many of us know, the further south you go, the less advantageous the winds are as you go. The trade winds, as we get down at least halfway or usually halfway down to the Caribbean, are going to come out of the east and southeast. So if you leave from uh, Lunenburg or Newport, uh, of course, you can always pick your weather on departure. So we wait for a front to go by, get a nice northerly breeze. Um, we did some fact checking this last week. It doesn't take four days to get to the Gulf Stream from, from New England. It's really just two days to the stream. Um, if you leave from the Chesapeake, which is a, a, a fine place to leave from, and highly recommended if you're living aboard your boat. Uh, years past, uh, especially with the Annapolis Boat Show, there was no reason to stay up north and be cold if you're living aboard your boat full time. So you'd head down in October down to the Chesapeake, see the Annapolis Show, and then head down for a, a post-November 1st departure waiting on a weather window. So even from there, you still have the option to go to Bermuda or straight shot. And we always uh, recommend Bermuda, and I have delivered boats from Bermuda, uh, from the Chesapeake down uh, to the Caribbean. And if you wanna sail, you really wanna uh, say, uh, head, head to a waypoint near Bermuda uh, to get in your easterly early, so that from Bermuda down, uh, they call it I-65, uh, you get down so you can almost reach down. If you try and go straight shot, again, you can't get a seven, eight, nine day weather window, uh, and that's why you often see a lot of boats just loaded up with a lot of fuel to uh, get from the Chesapeake straight on down to the Caribbean. Uh, and now uh, with the Bridges Virgin Islands not open, you still have another 100, 150 miles further east to get to. So by starting uh, from, from uh, Newport, you certainly save 200, 250 miles of easting uh, and also um, get across the stream two days rather than one day, of course, that's one of the advantages of from the Chesapeake you can get the stream uh, behind you uh, early on. Uh, another thing that we found last year was the size of the crews. Uh, the Salty Dog did a great job, the organization, in organizing boats coming back from the States. It was amazing how quickly things shut down last year, and hopefully that won't happen again this year. But uh, a lot of crews were shorthanded and couldn't get people flown in. So going uh, back home via the Bahamas and to Florida was a good option because you couldn't fly people in. Uh, a lot of people were able to get to St. Thomas and wait there uh, for the season and get some crew in. But if uh, you are sailing shorthanded uh, or are worried about that, uh, again, I, Joan mentioned early on about this crew network that we have, and it's a free service for free crew. Uh, and we get crew for anybody going anywhere uh, and it's a nice, efficient system. Uh, all you have to do is contact us with your crew needs. Uh, again, even on short notice, some people uh, go as couples uh, for obvious reasons. You know, when you get to where you're going, you just want uh, the boat to yourselves. Uh, with our service, uh, you have people show up just a day, or before, a day or two before you leave. You can do that offshore trip. And as soon as you get to your destination, your crew are leaving in a day or two. If you have friends or family come along, of course, they've helped you get to paradise, so they're going to hang out for a few days uh, as a reward. But usually couples like to have the boat back to themselves after a couple of days. Uh, also on short notice, quite often people be set with crew and somebody in emergency will come up last minute, especially this year, you might have that problem. We can often get crew on short notice because, again, it's an efficient system where we have uh, hundreds of members. We just type up a crew request, email it to them, and you get responses very quickly. So it's a nice option uh, to add more people. Um, and then if you are departing further south, as you know, some people head down more to Beaufort or even from Florida uh, going down to the Caribbean. And of course, everybody's familiar with the, the term, the Thorny Passage, and that is a eight, 900 mile slog directly upwind. Uh, again, uh, can't be avoided sometimes, but if uh, you do not wanna go offshore, a lot of people hug the coast and go down. Really just recommended if you have lots of time uh, to kill, uh, waiting for the right weather windows. As we know, uh, December and January, uh, very windy, strong winds, trade winds, so it's extra hard to get down there. So normally if you did leave from Florida, we would recommend trying to uh, go over the top of the Bahamas uh, and, and get all that easting in, as you can see by that, uh, the lines there to help you get down further south. 
So again, we're a proponent of just helping people in any way how to get south. Uh, you do have uh, options uh, on ways to go. Uh, lots of information out there in groups, uh, which is great. So if anybody needs help crew-wise. So we just wanted to really concentrate on Bermuda and St. Martin, but we also have David and Joan have done a little bit re more research on other places down in the Caribbean to go to. So we're gonna turn it over uh, for, to them to talk about the Virgin Islands, uh, Antigua, St. Lucia, uh, a little bit more information there. Uh, and then we'll uh, wrap it up with our chat. And then of course the screenshot so everybody can get the information on where uh, to link on and get more information for this crazy year that we have. Okay, so I'm on? Yes, David. What, uh, oh, you, uh, David and Joan, I'm not sure if you're gonna work together on this, but I know you've both been researching about St. Thomas. I know we all have, but uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you since you've been doing the work about the French islands, St. Lucia, mm -hmm. Antigua, Virgin Islands, etc. Okay. Uh, when Hank and I began putting this uh, webinar together, I began doing some research um, as I would for a magazine or article or if I was actually taking a boat south. And I want to share with you what I discovered, and it's a little confusing. A lot of the information is still in flux, changing, and will change as infection rates rise and fall. We just heard today that Guadalupe is closed now. So I asked myself, as a guy who has sailed off and on down there, if I was taking a boat south to the islands this fall, what would I want to know and when would I want to make the decision that it was safe to depart from my home? The 2,000 mile voyage, is there enough time? Even now to get the boat ready, find a crew, get everyone tested, provision the boat, get the boat down to Newport for a late October departure, there isn't much time. And I wanted uh, to be confident that there would be an island destination or two that would welcome me and my crew when we got there. Bermuda, we find going from Newport to Bermuda or, or from the Chesapeake are obvious first choices because the entry protocols that Bermuda has come up with are what I would expect and I would want for myself and my crew. This is a big deal being responsible for the crew and the boat to have, make sure that all the crew are safe and, and uh, COVID free. <clears throat> Once in the Caribbean, uh, which islands are accepting yachts and which islands have airports so I can get the crew home? Well, the first islands are the U.S. Virgin Islands, and they appear to be open. Uh, they were closed for a while, but with restrictions. All the yachts, now this is important if you've been down there before, uh, yachts that are arriving directly from the U.S. need to clear in. Before, they didn't need to do that. If you're going from the U.S. mainland to the Virgin Islands, you didn't need to clear in, but you do now. And crews will need to be tested upon arrival. And there is some arrangements for that, but it takes going to a hospital and a taxi cab. Uh, there has been no mention in the protocols that have been put out so far of about a pre-departure test. Uh, this may change and a noon site will have that information. Uh, Joan's been doing a lot of research on the places uh, that do this in the Virgin Islands and where to anchor your boat and where the quarantine areas are. But uh, the policy is slow getting in shape. The BVI has announced that it might open December 1st. That is not an option right now for delivering boats south. Flights back to the States are available from the USVI. For those wanting to sail further east, um, you've, uh, we've, you, you've heard today that uh, St. Martin is open and the protocols. And while still unofficial at this stage, uh, we expect them to be in place by the time you get there. Testing before departure from the States is advised, but um, Testing upon arrival can also be done with 24-hour turnaround. Uh, St. Martin can also provide your pre-departure test if you're heading down to islands further south. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this uh, thing called the, I'm gonna pull this up on the screen now, um, the bubble. Where is my bubble? There it is, share. This is the bubble. Um, I gotta see if I can get it bigger and down. Come on, come on down, there we go. Uh, CARICOM, which is an organization of uh, representing the English speaking islands in the Caribbean, they had a special emergency session on Friday 11th of September. So it's fairly recent. At the meeting, the heads of the island governments all agreed the travelers, and that would include yachts on cruising boats, that are traveling between these countries within the bubble would be allowed the following. 
entry without being subjected to a PRC test prior, not having to undergo quarantine restrictions. Travelers may be subject to screening on arrival. Travelers should have, uh, have resided within one of the bubble islands and not traveled to a, a side island uh, for at least 14 days before they plan to visit another island. All this is uh, documented um, uh, in the uh, clearing in and clearing out processes and you'll have to do that when you go from island to island. The islands uh, included are, uh, I'll move that over here so I can still read my script. The islands are uh, Antigua and Barbados, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, according to the latest, uh, are still considering the option. Customs and immigration procedures remain the same for each island as they always had been. But COVID testing may change from island to island and from time to time, so proper clearing in and out is required. As you also want to clear out so that your paperwork will show where you were last and what the dates are so you can enter another island. Uh, Antigua is the one that advises that you use EC Clear uh, for their online completion of the checking in paperwork. The French islands are, have their own bubble uh, and arriving yachts from islands uh, must show uh, prior negative PRC tests made less than 72 hours prior to arrival. That's not going to be too easy for some yachts traveling from other islands. A pre-arrival form and test results need to be sent electronically to the authorities 24 hours before arrival. Now, this is, um, where do you get all this information from? Uh, Noonside's been very, very helpful. Uh, and uh, they're one of, the, one of the great websites. This is, the this is one of the pages that lists the islands uh, that Noonside is covering. And you can click on any one of their biosecurity links and come up with all of their clearing in uh, proc uh, procurements. Now, what I would suggest is you keep, the, keep going with this so that by the time you're boarding your yacht to head to the Caribbean, you've got a bunch of options about knowing where you're going to be. Um, the, uh, so there's Noonsight. Uh, their, their website's very easy to get to. There is one, uh, this one here, um, St. Lucia, there's some talk about St. Lucia requiring some pre-testing when you arrive, and Rodney Bay Marina will do that for you, or they'll make the arrangements, and it can be done on board your yacht sitting at the dock. So that's that. Uh, now, where are we getting to the end here? Various Facebook sites uh, in the Caribbean also have information, uh, but it can be unreliable, and it can be fake news. Uh, Seven Seas Cruising Association, I'm sure, will pass along information to its membership as it's discovered. And as Joan and I have realized, it's just changing every day. Now, I wish we could be more helpful with information that is more reliable. Um, and I just received this from a yacht captain friend of mine in Beckwe. And he writes, the situation here can change changes constantly. I asked on the St. Martin Cruisers Group net about sailing between the French islands. I need to go to Martinique, then to St. Martin. All was okay until last week. Now Guadeloupe is closed as it's closed its borders as they are having a big spike in COVID-19. I was told that, uh, that one has to be in, Saint Mar in, in Martinique a minimum of 15 days before they can then move to another French island. Uh, again, we have to contact the authorities to find out. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, comments, Please jot them down and uh, we'll address as many of them. Joan's gonna read them off and Hank and I will see what we can come up with with some answers. Please don't cheat the system. One case of infection that leads back to a yacht crew and all of us will be quarantined for the season. So follow the procedures. Hank, this covers my research. Uh, do you wanna pass along anything or um, do you wanna to go to questions? Yeah, well, just one more uh, comment I'd like to make. And people say, you know, why, why do uh, we always go to St. Martin? And uh, for us, uh, we need an island that's very easy to fly in and out of. So uh, everybody knows St. Martin is a, a major port. I just booked my flight home today, uh, direct flight home for $201. So it's a very easy island to get to and from. They also have great marine services there. Uh, everybody knows Budget Marine. Well, the Budget Marine, the first one is in St. Martin, and the one there is two stories in is bigger, as big as any uh, mega West Marine that we have in the States. 
It's also a duty-free island. Uh, there is no tax on boat parts. There's no tax on food or anything. So uh, we almost say it's cheaper to eat out than it is to buy food and eat on board in so many places. Uh, but it just really has a wealth of marine services. And what IGY Marina has always done for our rally, and we are not doing a rally this year, but they are giving uh, two free days and 10% off to any boat that visits from the United States and say they saw this webinar or the Seven Seas Cruising Association members, or probably my name, Hank Schmidt, and you'll get the two free days and 10% off as long as you stay there. So if you wanna, you know, well, like I do, bring my boat down and then fly back for Thanksgiving and Christmas and go back in January, it's 10% off for the two and a half months. Uh, it also is an island that is duty free as far as carrying in parts. Uh, a couple years ago, I needed a new uh, uh, hydraulic vang, five feet long. I brought it down with me and carried it uh, through uh, the airport uh, just as if it was a piece of luggage. There's no going to duty or anything. So for many reasons, it's a, it's a very good place, especially at the end of a long passage. If you need to uh, uh, make repairs, if you need to reprovision, if you need to stock up on cheap alcohol and cigarettes, uh, or if you need to make a crew change, it's just a, a very nice place. Uh, and uh, a lot uh, a lot there. And it is a good place to base out of uh, for going to other places as well. So uh, they uh, did want me to make sure I extended that offer to anybody, just not folks in our NARC rally this year uh, for those discounts. Uh, so it is a great place. Uh, so again, it is going to be a challenging year. Uh, I think if uh, you're planning to go down and fly back and forth and try and hit lots of islands, this might be a year not to go. But I think many people in the Seven Seas Cruising Association, many people that have been planning for years to go down and spend a lot of time on their boats, uh, I see no reason to, to not go down. Uh, again, usually when there are more challenges, uh, the rewards are that much better. Uh, you'll have a much bigger story uh, of what you did during uh, the second season of COVID. Uh, so uh, I do encourage you to go if you've been planning for a long time uh, and don't wait another year. Uh, and uh, as uh, new, new things come up. We are uh, going to uh, take this. We might be able to re-edit as things change as well. So I believe we'll have this uh, video also up on the Seven Seas Cruising Association, a couple other places, and we'll also try and uh, uh, upgrade as the information comes in. Uh, and just to emphasize too, what David said, not only uh, be, don't cheat the system. You, you want to be safe uh, for you and your crew. You know, don't leave with crew that just fly in and get sick at sea, uh, but also let's not be uh, the source of any uh, outbreaks or, or any uh, incursions into these countries. You have to understand these Caribbean islands do not have the infrastructure and the hospitals that we that we have here. Uh, so they get really spooked when the numbers go up. So we have to do our part to make sure we keep numbers down um, and of course, uh, keep everybody safe. Um, so Joan, uh, I, I see there may be a few question and answers if you'd like to, to read them and we'll, yeah. we'll um, go ahead, Joan. Well, first of all, um, could you clarify, Hank, St. Martin's is uh, test within five days of arrival? No, no, um, you have to test five days before departure. So before departure. You could leave from, from the Chesapeake or from Newport, go straight there. As long as you test five days before you leave, uh, you're good. Um, and then uh, you'll, you'll fill out that form. Uh, it, it does help. And, and that's why this year, it, you don't want to be so much loosey-goosey, I'm going to go wherever. It, it almost makes sense to, to fill out the paperwork for Bermuda. Uh, if you're thinking to go about that going there or just go there, just, just make this year to go Bermuda if you haven't in the past to break up the trip. Um, and then also uh, uh, make sure you, you fill out the paperwork for wherever else you're going and, and get tested. Follow, follow the protocols and don't, uh, don't try and cut uh, at all uh, this year. Having yeah, Bermuda, have, just to say, having Bermuda allow you to come in and drop the hook in quarantine to get out of weather or to fix something is extremely helpful. It's a, it's, a, it's a rest area in the middle of the Atlantic that can be used even if you don't need provisions or to go ashore. Yeah, that's a very good point. Last year, of course, uh, we in the Caribbean, a lot of islands just shut down and didn't want to let you in no matter what happened. Bermuda, since it's way out there in the middle of the ocean, even at the height of, of COVID, they know they're the only island in the area. So they would let boats come in, drop anchor, rest, bring them something if they needed to. Uh, but you, you can, if, if you were planning to not stop in Bermuda, didn't fill out any paperwork, but if you're tired or you need something or have a repair, you can pull in. They will not deny you entry. Uh, I think people have been watching. Uh, there was just a, a, a German group that went into New Zealand uh, and didn't do the proper uh, procedures, and, and they got a, a quick ticket home and out of there, and their boat's still stuck. 
So uh, that, that's an example of, of a country that, that is not a safe haven to go in if you have uh, any breakdowns. Yeah. Bermuda uh, will let you come in uh, and, and help you. The BVI is not even allowing you to transit their territorial waters. Correct. Now the Virgin Islands are a little bit different. Um, you'll use Rome when you get there. That's how you'll check in. And you can get a same day test at either the lab up by the hospital by the harbor in Charlotte and Molly, or at Red Hook. I would suggest going to Red Hook and anchoring there because it's at Red Hook that you can do the same day test. Then you don't have to quarantine. They will not take a test from the United States unless it's within five days of arrival. There's no way that you can really make it in five days. So the you do the test before you leave just for safety sakes, you know your crew's okay. You could stop at the Virgin Islands, get a same day test and leave from there. Um, you could quarantine there. Antigua has some rules. Um, I don't have that right offhand, but I know it's on noon site. We've been posting a noon site, all of the information, all the forms for almost every one of these islands, there's a link on noon site. Um, Sue Richards has done a marvelous job. We're all feeding her like crazy um, and getting the right government information. I think Dave has done a wonderful job. And let me look at some of these questions that we have. We had the one chat question and uh, the suggestion to leave slides up a little bit longer so they, people can see them when they come up. But here we have five questions. Regarding Bermuda, does everyone aboard a vessel which has, in which a passage is made need to quarantine if all the passengers and crew do not possess a negative test result in arrival, even if the individual may possess a negative result? Now, all, all individual people do need to test and have a negative test with them. If one person does not, and it does not include the antibodies, it has to be the nasal test. So everybody has to test, uh, show that first test, and then get retested upon arrival. Uh, I did sail there this last July uh, under the spirit of Bermuda rally. Only four boats went, uh, Andy Shells, two swans, myself, and one other boat. They uh, ran it because they thought they'd have a lot of people that were planning to do the Annapolis Bermuda or Newport Bermuda race. That was canceled. So spirit of Bermuda came up with this fun ra uh, fundraiser rally idea, but only four boats went and we went under this new uh, COVID protocol. So we all tested before we left. We tested upon arrival. We got our tests back in 16 hours, and then we were free to go ashore for our uh, three days uh, stay there. So uh, if you uh, follow formalities, it's, it's not a big deal. They actually come down uh, to uh, the customs with a tent and people and set up, uh, very efficient, uh, and they do a good job. Uh, but no, everybody does need to be tested. And one person not tested, that's one person potentially sick. So David, that was uh, David Disbrow. And uh, I think the answer is everyone has to have a negative test on your boat. Uh, there's no, there's no go get out of jail free card. So if that now, person, if that person has has um, symptoms or has a, he's contaminating the rest of the crew. Right. So Dick Garvin has says we're in Grenada and heading north. Must we get testing to enter St. Martin's if we stay in the Caracom bubble on the way north? Uh, St. Martin is not part of the Caracom bubble but they will yes. test you when you get there or you can have a test that is uh, five days before departure and then you can go just like you'd be going from the states yeah what what st martin is doing and Nor norena mentioned it it's almost like uh, I'm, I, I live in new york state new york state every day they says what state in the u.s united states you can come and not guarantee or what you can based on their numbers and what norena said in st martin if you are arriving from another country in the Caribbean that has low rates, St. Martin is not going to make you test when you arrive. So if you're coming from one of these bubble countries that St. Martin is not in, but if you come from a bubble country which is safe, numbers are low, St. Martin, again, at their discretion, will say you do not have to test. So uh, if you're coming from a, a, a Grenada which is safe, and heading up towards St. Martin, certainly if you're in that bubble on the way up and then go from, I guess, St. Lucia is the most Northern Island there in the bubble. If you went to St. Martin, you would not have to test going into St. Martin as long as the numbers were still low. You would have to fill out the, uh, the entry uh, request 
and they would say where you're coming from and they would respond back whether that's okay. Right. And then Joe Kapinski, and he's the Antigua host for Seven Seas, he says the problem for salty dogs is time at sea counts for their quarantine. So if they stop along the way, the quarantine clock starts new. So if they stop in Bermuda or they stop in BIs, you have to start that 14 day quarantine count. Also, if you have a negative test when leaving the US, that and not stopping will mean you will not have to buy a retest in Antigua. And he's you just, just saying that. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I think but you just gotta keep checking noon site. We'll post a noon site. We're right. posting for our COVID forum. You're posting, everybody's posting. We're trying to find the answers. Yes, so Bermuda does, thank you very Bermuda, much for that. Yes, Bermuda does include does include time at sea towards working and, and a stop there. So Antigua is just uh, being a little less friendly by uh, wanting you to retest there. Uh, but technically, if you you know uh, stopped at another place and got tested, uh, you know when you along the way, uh, you should be in that bubble. But but uh, that that's fine. Uh, uh, now Jan Janet Steinberg, you stop if you need to. But if you're not planning to, you can certainly go uh, straight on to Antigua. Uh, it just adds another day, day and a half more than the, the to the BBI. Okay. Janet Steinberg, and I think this has been answered, but it's, she says, ask, it is my understanding from sources in Antigua that some Eastern Caribbean islands have grouped together and have a bubble, no further testing needed. If islands can keep infection ratio less than two, and she says, I understood that St. Martin was not in this group. Going to St. Martin is a little bit different than going from St. Martin to the other CARICOM countries. Do you have that any is, comments? St. Martin, St. Martin is not in the bubble. So she is correct. St. Martin is not in the bubble because they are not a member of Caricom. But the, as, as Nora explained, if you want to go to the other islands from St. Martin, uh, they will get you a test so you can get into the other islands. And then you can come back without any testing. You can come back to St. Martin from any other, uh, any other Caricom islands and not get tested. Thank you very much for that, David. Now, Steve uh, Sagwa, I hope I say that right. I believe the BVIs are totally closed to any vessels at this time. I can answer that. Yes, they are closed. They are talking December 1 of opening, but until it opens, you can't guarantee it. It may be December 1, it may not. Yes, what happened, what, happened in the B, what happened in the BVIs, and anybody that has ever done a Caribbean 1500 under Steve Black or the first year after uh, would know Dave, Barefoot, Barefoot Dave or Dave Murray, who did every Caribbean 1500. I spoke with him yesterday, and he said uh, the BVIs uh, opened up for a short time just for inner island, and so many people from St. Thomas illegally went over, so their numbers went up. So it's a good, good example of people not following the rules uh, and getting the BVI shut down again. So that's why uh, we do want to make sure uh, that we, we do the rules. I was actually in, in St. Thomas and Red Hook for seven weeks last year, and uh, they never really shut down too much, except they shut down uh, the beaches after a while, because again, the locals were not listening to not having parties on the beach. So for a short time, uh, even the beaches were shut down. So, so the rules are in place for a reason, uh, and we do really want to try and, and follow the rules and do what's right. Uh, again, it's yeah, really the big problem has been with, not have good uh, uh, medical facilities. Yeah, the biggest problem I think in the Caribbean and even uh, in um, Canary Islands and even the ABCs is they had the August um, holidays for Europe, EU countries, and there was a lot of travel, and so that now you have the Canary Islands increasing. You have Cariacou, or not Cariacou, but Curacao suddenly increasing. You have uh, Martinique increasing. August 27th, someone said it was red in our webinar. And now we have uh, Guadeloupe closed. So people moving around, they're going out, they may not be doing the smart stuff and it's, it's showing up. Um, so we just all have to be careful so we don't do it to somebody. But again, BVIs are t closed right now to December 1st and we don't know, we'll just have to watch. Yeah, more, um, reason for, more reason for us sailors to hang around with uh, each other and not talk to the, the people getting off the planes. <laughs> Joe Kapinski. I, I can't think of a better place to um, social distance than on my boat anchored in Five Islands Bay in Antigua. <laughs> Joe Kapinski says, Antigua, Barbados, Dominica, as well as St. Vincent 
and the grenadines have all qualified within the Cariacom bubble. Other Eastern Caribbean islands and states, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts, and Nevis, St. Lucia, have qualified under the Cariacom COVID standard, but have yet to be fully engaged. Again, they're still working on how this all works together. And we have from an anonymous attendee, CDC advises against Antigua travel level three warning. Any comment? How are the real numbers for these islands? Ah. I didn't hear that one. Yeah. That's new to me, but again, I, we can only expect things like this to happen. Uh, again, you know, whether it's uh, the fake news that, that David, uh, you know, said to earlier or just things are gonna change so quickly. Um, you know, we, we, we all uh, heard stories about people last year, you know, having all sorts of nightmare scenarios because uh, things shut down and changed. Uh, and that is again, just because uh, the infrastructure is so, uh, the, the medical infrastructure is not great on these islands. So they just uh, really want to try and stay safe. <laughs> Yeah, I think the thing to do is to watch the posts um, as best we can. Uh, SSCA is posting on the Facebook page. We're posting in the forum. We're sending everything to Noonsight, and Noonsight sending stuff to us. I mean, it's a two-way street. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're calling the islands. We're probably driving them nuts. But uh, you haven't lived until you call 25 numbers in one place to find where the COVID tests are somewhere. But... Uh, <laughs> I think it's important to stay in contact and keep watching. Now, this webinar will be um, it's recorded and it will be posted on SSCA, and you'll get the link, Hank. Uh, the questions that we answered will be sent out, um, and uh, we'll answer them again as time comes up. Um, and I can't think of other than I have a dog growling at my feet. Um, I can't think. <laughs> They're really growling. Um, I am going to uh, turn it over to you, David, for a few last moments, and to you, Hank, for a few last comments. Yes, we have that uh, last screenshot that we said, kept talking about that we put up so people can write down uh, anything they need or take a, a picture so you can see the different links uh, for uh, both Bermuda, St. Martin, uh, certainly uh, offshore pasture opportunities, and we have Noon Site on there too, which I don't think anybody uh, doesn't know about. But a noon site, uh, again, is, is the best for the latest news. Um, so yes, so you, you do have your different sites there. And like I say, this will be edited and redone and it'll probably be a couple of days, two or three days, we'll get it up there and possibly even update it as we go. So uh, looking forward to seeing uh, all of you down in the Caribbean. If any of you are near Bermuda during election day, we're having an election day party at the St. George's Dinghy and Sports Club. Uh, I've had too many years offshore uh, for elections, so wanted to maybe see what was going on this year and, and watch it live and then uh, leave the day after the elections to head down to the Caribbean. Um, so uh, we'll be looking for uh, the SSCA flags uh, throughout the Caribbean. And uh, if anybody sees uh, my boat or me up there, please come over and say hi. Uh, David, do you have any closing words? I don't. Uh, I just wish we had more concrete, reliable information to pass along. But we can. We'll keep following up, Joan and I, and the rest of the people on the on the internet sites, uh, so that uh, it'll be interesting to uh, to put all this together in an article later on about how it all transpired. And we're we're moving forward, and that's the important thing: is that the islands are all trying to cooperate so that uh, they are not turning their back on their cruising community. Yes, and a good time for the sailing community, all of us also to work together to pass on information and help each other out there. So uh, looking forward to seeing you out there. And if anybody has any questions, whether it's about crew or sailing down that way, please feel free to call or email me anytime. Uh, I do this full time uh, and have been for a long time and always love talking about sailing and helping people uh, and make successful passages. So thank you all for tuning in and hope to see you in the Caribbean, uh, if not this year, next year, or at a boat show next year. And thank you very much, Hank, and, and thank you, David, for your time. I just saw a note from Jesse James, who is in Trinidad. He's their host in Trinidad. Nothing new there in Trinidad. They're not open yet, but their PM is giving an update this Saturday, and he'll keep us updated. So um, that's the best we can do. I know we're going to be doing more um, webinars. We have one October 8th for the Western side 
of um, Central America from Mexico down to Panama and to the Galapagos to inform on that area. We've done one on the Pacific, that's all available. People can look at that. We have one of the Caribbean, we'll update that again. Um, it's the best we can do. And I see Tony Salvia said thank you and Janet said thank you, great information. Thank you all for, for listening to what we're trying to, to share. And anything else guys? Don't forget from here. Don't thank forget. you, John, for putting this together Thank for you. us. Excellent. Thank you. Good night.